we're live. Awesome. Hello, everybody. And gosh, as much as I, I March was one of those good good months, it's like going to be the last good month we're going to see. Um, the median we can start to see shake up a little bit, and I'm not a fan of the median sales price. I've been trying to uh, explain that to all of the reporters that are out there because they're going to get this wrong. The median sales price is going to drop significantly, and we'll get into that at the very end um, uh, of this because of luxury is definitely uh, definitely been whacked. So we're not going to see as many luxury sales, which is going to affect the median sales price, and it's going to be a non-story that they're going to make into a story. So I'm not a big fan of looking through your rear view mirror. Instead, my report focuses on what's going on right now today. And that's why it's very fluid and I'm updating these on a weekly basis. The next one comes out for San Bernardino, uh, San Bernardino Riverside came out this, this Monday. So next Monday is Orange County, LA, San Diego will be my next report. So there's a lot of panic and fear out there, but I want everybody to know they need to take a deep breath and just relax. That, uh, the United States, this is, we're going to be back. We're going to, we're going to experience a B that's America is back and housing is extremely strong. And everybody thinks that I'm just blowing sunshine and rainbows and butterflies and all that stuff. I'm not. I'm, I, I was waving a big giant flag, a, a big giant cautionary flag back in 2006. And not a lot of people were listening, but that's had everything to do with the, the imbalance of supply and demand back then. The metrics are way different this time around. And we are in a very low mortgage rate environment, which is absolutely helping fuel, uh, fuel this. But I want everybody to understand that the mortgage industry is currently broken. And um, it's, not, it's still functioning and they still can get things done, they just can't get everything done that everybody was accustomed to. Everything was easing, so uh, quite a, it was easing quite a bit, but nothing like prior to the Great Recession. That's, that was a house of cards ready to absolutely collapse. Nothing like that at all. I mean, really sound economic fundamentals for lending for, a very, for quite some time, and it's created a very sound patch of housing. So that's why housing is so strong. However, right now it's kind of broken under the hood. And I don't even need to even get into the details. I'm just really paying attention to when the solutions come out at this point. I listen to hours upon hours upon hours of very smart people talk about it. So I understand it, but it, we don't need to explain it all. Just know that the mortgage market is, is broken underneath of the hood, that it's not going to be business as usual until we get to the other side of this and until they put in some additional patches as well. But be patient with your lenders. Be patient with the whole process. Be flexible. Tell your buyers they need to be flexible. That it's not the way it was before, where you lock and load and go. It's uh, you need to to be flexible with what everything that's going on out there. And they need to understand, as far as home loans are concerned, that the rates could change based upon how high your credit scores are, what your income uh, to your payment to income levels are and uh, credit scores, all that stuff. Uh, you're gonna probably have to pay points, especially in stuff that doesn't go into the exact right package because lenders need to make money and they need to be able to package these things so that they can be uh, sold in the secondary market and also be serviced. So um, understand rate locks will change and there, there are much, much, much tighter qualifications. And uh, there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered. When will QM, uh, non-QM stuff come back? That's non-qualified mortgage. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that there's no jumbo products. I know that jumbo products still exist. I know that you can still do these 80, 10, 10s and different things like that. So there are things that are available. You just need to be aligning yourself with mortgage operators that actually really have a handle on this and know what they're doing and can explain it to your clients. So uh, just know that the 10-year treasury is really low and we should have rates in the twos. We don't, and that's all pricing into the fact that, A, they don't have the volume to handle uh, a refinance boom as well as uh, a mortgage, any kind of mortgage boom, A. And B, it's, it, it, we, would, we don't have it in the twos because it's broken underneath. And the mortgage market overall, 
Uh, you can under, you see that we've been flat. We're at 3.33% on average. That is the stuff that fits into the, this little box. That's the stuff that's conforming. That's the stuff that has a really good debt to income ratio. And that's the stuff with higher credit scores. I know that there are certain big lenders that said they will not touch anything below 700. So if you have clients that you're dealing with with uh, credit scores below 700, understand that there are some, that, that the opportunities are thinning out a little bit in that arena. So the SoCal house market, what am I looking at right now? I can really answer this because uh, I was telling you what I was gonna be looking at uh, about a month ago, but I really got this dialed in at this point. I'm looking at supply changes right now. Um, I know that we are a, uh, a we are a an industry that is is seen as essential, but that isn't going to shift demand that much. What I'm very wary of is that it shifts the inventory to a higher level, which could push us towards a slight buyer's market, not even a big buyer's market where we're giving up value that much value, but a slight buyer's market where it starts to tilt in favor of buyers because there's too many homes in the market and a very, very muted demand. And then I'm looking at demand changes. So as we get closer to the end of, of this uh, lockdown, stay at home policy, we want to see the demand start to pick up. So that's something else that we're looking at. I think right, right now we're seeing bottom of the barrel as far as demand. We're at a, a what we have, a, what I call just inherent demand. We always will have demand. And that's where it's at right now because it's really low. So there are transactions taking place. Just understand that. I'm watching the numbers of homes coming on the market. And I'm comparing that uh, month to month as well as year over years averages. And then, so what I'm seeing right now, and this is what the article talks about, the last one is that supply versus demand, it is head to head action. So the supply issue of not enough homes on the market totally favors sellers, and it has. And um, this is the first time that we're actually seeing a supply issue, not because we're placing a large number in escrow, because that's where we were before. What we're seeing is, is that, they, that people aren't placing their homes on the market, homeowners aren't. So that's really what's going on. And then we also have a demand issue that is really low that is favoring buyers. And now they're duking, duking it out. That's not the case. Back in uh, the Great Recession, it was demand. I should make that slide. Holy smoke, that's a great idea. Uh, uh, excuse me while I write something down because that will definitely convey things. You have some wimp wimpy, uh, tiny little arms, almost like me. I don't have giant guns or anything going against some behemoth. So uh, that is an imbalance and that's what we had in the Great Recession because supply was, we had so much that as far as the market favoring sellers, it was weak and against demand that was really low that was just taking it to the sellers. So, um, but right now today, we so we ha don't have enough homes on the market. And the active listing inventory for Southern California at April 9th was at 29,148. That was up 1% in a two week period. So not much uptick at all. And uh, you can see that was 332 in two weeks for all of Southern California. That's not that many more, uh, uh, that's not that big of an increase. Last year we were 41,479. That was up 42% compared to where we are today. And that's the difference between this year and last year. Today, as of this morning, 29,839, that's up 2.4% compared to April 9th. And I crunched the numbers tomorrow. So you can see we're up a little bit. So we're starting to, in, uh, to, to rise. We normally rise during, during the spring, but we also normally are rising in demand during the spring. So because we're rising right now, and demand has actually continued to drop, we're seeing the expected market time uh, go up. And I'll show you that. So this is the active listing inventory for Orange County. Uh, it's, at, it's up 0.6% in two weeks and 64% more last year. There's the difference. And today it's up 2.2% over last year. I mean, over uh, April 2nd. I want everybody to know in 2017, there were 18,000 homes on the market. 
So you see where we're at, 4,273. 18,000 is over four times. When I do the math, that's pretty huge. And if you see this, this was 2006, and this was 2007. So it went from 16,000 to 18,000, back down to 16,000, just about in 2008. You can see the supply issue was way, way, way too many homes on the market. I mean, this was such an imbalance that it created a major problem. Compare that to the very, very right of the screen, and that's where we are today. We can't even get to 4,500 homes in Orange County. And, uh, and there, I'm bringing this up for Orange County. I don't have the, this exact chart for the rest of Southern California. I know where they were back in the day, and I'll, I will get to that. But I want everybody to know this is the way all of the United States is working. This is the way all of Southern California was working. Not enough homes on, uh, on the market today with very low demand is on the right. And this is the mismatch. So we have that same demand right now that we had during the Great Recession. That's where we are right now. It's inherent demand. That's where we are. But to see this mismatch with way too many homes in the market, when you have this giant mismatch and that much blue, what ends up happening is it totally favors the buyer. Buyers, you have a lot and lot, lots and lots and lots of goods, and very few buyers, and everybody's selling the same goods. You know what? It's the only thing to, to help motivate is a drop in price compared to everybody else. And that's what happened back. And then we got this in 2012 and 2013 where the numbers, they sat right on top of each other. And that is where it is that we got to a less than 30 day expected market time. That's where homes are just flying off the market. And this is where we are today. It doesn't even do justice. If you look, the green is actually right now where it was prior uh, during the Great Recession. You can't even see it on this chart because it was down so quick that it's blending with the black line. But you can still see not, not, not a lot of blue space. That is why it is not a buyer's market. You need way more blue space. So we need to see that line go all the way up to where we've seen them in prior years. And we weren't even giving up that much price in 2011. You can see we had over 10,000 homes on the market. So uh, we need to increase quite a bit. It all boils down to supply and demand. And those people that are holding out for it to be like the Great Recession, that's not happening. The uh, active listing inventory in Orange County, you can see it's also low. We have, it was down 1% in two weeks. That was uh, as of April 2nd. It was, there was 51% more last year than this year. You can see there's the difference. And today they have 4.3% more compared to April 2nd. So they're actually starting to rise a little bit faster than I would like. And I think LA is one of the, uh, they're, they're not behaving themselves right now. There's too many people coming on the market compared to where demand's going. So I'd be very cautious and I would look at the numbers, especially in the different ranges. During, in 2007, there were 32,000 homes on the market. In LA, that was over three times. And in San Diego, we had 4%. Uh, it was up 4% in two weeks. And they were at 5,018. They had a very, very muted demand compared to everyone else in Southern California. So that's why theirs was rising. Um, two, two weeks ago, just about on April 2nd. Last year, they were at 35% more uh, inventory. And if you see today, they're, they're up 2.5% from last week. So they're on that slight uptick. In 2007, they had 20,000 homes on the market, nearly four times as many as where they are today. So they too, it's not like the Great Recession. They don't have enough supply. And Riverside, same thing, up 4% in two weeks. Uh, that was as of last week and then last year they they had 34 percent more homes on the market and today they're at 6923 so virtually flat from last week and they had 27,000 homes on the market that's a lot more inventory and then the same thing with san bernardino you see up three percent in two weeks this was their number as of april 9th last week they had 34 percent more last year today they're also flat compared to last week and they had nearly 18,000 homes on the market as well. So uh, you have to understand that is a lot more uh, inventory back in the Great Recession. Time. So we have low supply, right, versus COVID-19 demand problem. And this is where we are as of April 2nd. And we were down 30% in two weeks. That was the big story. We came way down and uh, we really cooled. Last year, we were at 16,388. That's the orange line. The difference is huge. 
uh, 47% more demand last year. And remember, during this time last year, demand was actually, uh, the, the market wasn't as heated as it was in uh, prior years. And that's because we were still coming off of those higher interest rates at the end of 2018. So this first half of 2019 actually didn't look that great. It wasn't until we got to the summer that it started looking better. Today, we're at 8,491. It's down 24% since April 2nd. Now we're hitting inherent demand. This is 8,500 is about inherent demand for all of Southern California. It, that's down 10% since last Thursday. I just want people to know that it was continuing to drop. Now that I'm snapping these numbers, I like to snap these numbers now because it gives me last four weeks, we've been in isolation now for four weeks. And that is enough to understand that we still have uh, this is the inherent demand that we're looking now at demand going back four weeks. But these are all true escrows that were placed into escrow after we had the stay at home order. So, why hasn't inventory spiked? Well, I'll tell you, it's because, and you'd think that inventory would spike like crazy with demand falling if we have the same number of people coming on the market. That's because there's not enough people entering the parade. 30% fewer homeowners are placing their homes in the market compared to last. Uh, to the last five year average. And there's a lot of homeowners placing their homes on hold. And I heard that there's gonna be a wave down the road. That's just not true, it's not gonna happen. We're not gonna have a wave of uh, these people coming on the market all of a sudden, even though there's a lot on hold because they don't all come on. They, there's not a light switch. It's kind of like this wait and see. Is it, are we ready to do this? Do we want to do it? There's some people that are gonna say, I don't wanna open up my house yet. I don't want people coming in. That will all be determined by each individual. So it's not going to be this flood. It's going to be the slow, methodic uh, increase in number of people coming on the market. Or we'll hold do not show as well as the people that once we get to the other side, there will be some sellers that will decide to come on. But it's got to be the further we get away from afterward, it's lifted, the more we're going to, we're going to be going back to normal. But it's not going to be like a a uh, snap of the fingers. It's not going to be a light switch, anything like that. It's going to be this transition. So the Southern California expected market time. Place your home on the market today. When are you going into escrow? That's all that buyers and sellers should, should think about. And now we have the data to show sellers exactly what is going on. And we also have the data to show buyers. It's not what you think. And that's because this gives, I, I, I have the, uh, the chart at the bottom has the, it shows you in that little index where you have to be for it to be a deep buyer's market. And you have to be the deep buyer's market to give up value. You have to be above 150 days. SoCal as of April 2nd was at 79 days. SoCal last year was at 76 days. So we crossed past that orange line. But guess what? We kept going. SoCal today is at 105 days. So it's zoomed all the way past that 100. Point. You can see it's continuing to go up. If you're a buyer, you're just going to sit, sit back and say, I can't wait for that to continue to go up. I'm so sorry. That's just not going to happen because we're at inherent demand and active inventory is just slightly increasing. So yes, it's been going like this because demand's been falling, but now that demand will be flat after this next uh, reading, I'm doing this report and it's going to come out uh, this coming up Monday. And that's where some buyers are going to get ahead of themselves and see this expected market time going like this. But I'm here to tell you, it's going to go like this and then like that, maybe slightly up. So this is where we are uh, right now today. LA is at 104 day expected market time right now. Orange County is at 112 day expected market time. Riverside County is at 124 day expected market time. They're actually in the slight buyer's market that barely. And that means that it, it uh, favors buyers a little bit more in the negotiating process, but they, they don't get that much drop in price. I mean, I can see if you're on the, the market for a million bucks, I can see if the last one sold for a million bucks, it sells for 990 or 985. What is that one to one and a half percent pushback? Remember, we've already appreciated 5%, so we can push back another couple percent uh, while we're in lockdown. San Bernardino County is at 102 day expected market time. And San Diego's at 87 days. They haven't even got to balance yet. They're at slight sellers, but it's so slight sellers, this just slightest, and it's gotta be the certain price range as well. So I bring up this, this chart again, just to understand if, if we had 
if we didn't have such muted supply and we had supply way up high, similar to where we were prior to the Great Recession, and if, we, if I put that in there, check out where we would be today with the muted demand. Because keep in mind, demand is actually inherent and it's right now where Southern California levels are right now. So LA would be at a 400 day expected market time if we had gigantic supply. And Orange County would be at 487 days. And Riverside County would be at 338 days. San Bernardino, 469 days. Eek! San Diego, 374 days. What does that mean? That means we would be giving up price if we had more supply. But guess what? We don't have that supply. So eh, that's not happening. Instead, we have a balanced market, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, Mr. and Mrs. Fence Sitter, Mr. and Mrs. Wishful Thinker. It's housing is way too strong to get whacked by we were just this behemoth. And all of a sudden, it's not going to go flabby. Yes, we can't go to the gym, so now it's, we are, you know, we're not in, in peak shape, but we're also not flabby yet. Uh, so the expected market time year over year, I'm here to show you that this is where it is to be balanced. And that's where we're headed right now. We're in the hundreds, right? We can get all the way up to 120 and it still wouldn't be uh, a uh, buyer's market. This is where we are, this is where we're going, and then it's going to go flat. And so the next report is going to be all the way up higher. And then after that, I expect it to be flat or a slight increase and it will change. And uh, so understand that for all those people that are holding out for it to be a slight uh, for a buyer's market, they might get their way. In some areas, we might get to 120 days. And but that's not where you give up value. That 10, 20, 25, 30 percent that people are looking for, you have to be north of that 150 day expected market time. Done the analysis for a long time. I, I, I have lots and lots of charts and data going back way uh, in a, a long time ago. And so when you have all that, I'm able to look at, to, to see how the behavior, uh, how it occurs for sellers when they feel like panic mode, there's way too many uh, homes in the market. If you remember back, just think back to 2006, 2007, 2008, and I remember, on every single street, there was a couple signs or sale signs. Every street. When you have as many homes on the market as we did in Southern California, there were signs everywhere. I can tell you today, you can see the signs of it still being a depressed uh, number of homes on the market. You, you look, I have no for sale signs on my street. I have no for sale signs on the street next to me and the street behind me. I did see one down, down the road. So there's one among all five streets that are around me. So that's where it's different. And then low mortgage rates. Oh, yes, that is what is going to get us out of this mess. So the market overview looks like this. <clears throat> in order for it to be a buyer's market, we'd have to be in lockdown for longer than June 1st. That's the first thing. The second thing is, it has to be for a substantial amount of time where inventory starts to rise to a point where the, some people are getting desperate and the only way to move their house is to bring it down in price. In order for that to happen in big chunks where they come down 20, uh, you know, like 10%, where if it's listed at a uh, uh, million dollars, they're coming off, off of it $50,000 or $100,000. In order to get to that, you have to be in that buyer's market territory where it's an active listing territory for like nine months to a year. It's like doing a U-turn with a, in, with a cruise ship. It's not sudden. It takes a tugboats and different things like that in a narrow channel to make this kind of a move. And it's a really slow mental shift that homeowners and sellers have to make themselves. Sellers that are actively on the market that are going, in order for me to get this done, I have to actually go way below the last column. And that takes time to get there. It does not happen overnight. It's that kind of thinking, because you're still dealing with sellers that have stupid thinking. At least they're getting better. And they're, they're, they, I'm sure that they've had enough come at them where there's some nerves where they want to price a little bit more in line with where they need to be. But they're not ready to make giant reductions in their price to move that. So won't there be a wave of distress? That question asked a lot. 
remember I told you housing is strong. And I know NAR just sent something, I guess that's what was, was I was told, I didn't even look at it, where they're talking about the distressed market and you can get that designation. I'm kind of upset that they did that. Um, I, I think that this is inappropriate timing for that. They, they need more information and they need to talk to uh, more economists um, because there's not gonna be a way. It's not a house of cars like the Great Recession. We have really strong people in homes and understand that the number of unemployed, 80% of those that are unemployed are in the lower uh, bracket, the lower income bracket. Not the middle income bracket, not the high bracket, but 80% fall down below. And you know, those are the your, your servers at restaurants. Those are the, the uh, you know, um, there's not a lot of Uber activity going on. Those are the people that are getting hit the hardest. And, and yes, there are other other uh, people among the 20% that will that are being hit. There are, there are a lot of jobs that have been furloughed. They will get to the other side of this and banks are gonna work with them as much as possible to make them whole because they are sound borrowers. This isn't like before where we had to like put a Band-Aid on borrowers that, were, that couldn't handle the interest rates. These people, once they go back and handle the interest rates, their jobs might not be there now, but they will be down the road. And there will be this opportunity to bridge the gap from where we are today to where we are uh, to the other side of things. And there's gonna be lots and lots of, of moving parts to that. The government's gonna come in and make that as, uh, as painless as possible. Will there be pain? Absolutely. Will there be people that are still affected by this? Absolutely. My big concern are the number of people that are, went into forbearance and are gonna have a problem getting a loan on the other side. We're gonna hear lots and lots about that down the road, but understand this is here, uh, that it's not gonna be as bad as what people make it out to be. So we will have, some uh, we will have some that uh, will will that, that will be distressed, and when you're going from such an anemic level of nothing on the market to where we will be down the road, understand that that is going from like like I'll take for example in uh, L.A. County they have 100 in Orange County they have 50, so they go from fifth from 100 to 200. Is that an increase? Yeah, double, and that'll make headlines. 50 to 100, is that an increase? Yeah, double, that will make headlines. But I'm still, back during the Great Recession uh, and, and afterwards, we were dealing with thousands on the market. And I have all the distressed going back and I still do the distressed. And I can show you with those charts. Matter of fact, I should pull those out because everybody keeps on bringing it up and I'm here to show everybody what distress looked like back in the day. So it's just gonna pale in comparison to the Great Recession. Will it be more than what we're dealing with right now? Absolutely. So, um, so it's not a house of cards like a Great Recession. We had a lot of people that had to qualify for their purchases. Big down payments uh, were huge. There's a lot of equity in the system. So they're not gonna have to go the short sell route. They're, uh, they're not gonna have to go the uh, foreclosure route and understand that two out of the last five recessions were uh, affected uh, housing market values in 1991 and in 2008, that was savings and loan, and that was the Great Recession. We, the housing industry and lending led those recessions, and that's why they whacked housing. Didn't even whack it as hard in, 19, in the 90s as it did in 2008. In 2008, absolutely, it, we all got hosed uh, in equity. However, this one is not real estate led. As a matter of fact, it's none of the uh, industries led. It is a forced shutdown where on the other side, we're gonna wanna resume as best as possible and go back to work. We are tired of being in our houses. So, um, and I look at it like this. It's the story of the three little pigs. This is great to, to explain to uh, uh, sellers. And I did this and I did it wrong because I said the, one of the pigs, I repeated it, they divided the twigs. So the first one is made out of hay. So there was, the Great Recession was the house made out of hay. It literally was a house of cards ready to, to blow down. I mean, e really easy to knock that puppy down. Uh, this, this wolf had to do nothing, just barely blow on it and the thing all just came tumbling down. That was the Great Recession. Then you have the savings and loan scandal of the 1990s, and that was not as bad, but it was made out of sticks. 
pretty easy still for the uh, huffing and puffing of the wolf to blow down. Our housing market right now is made out of brick. That big bad wolf is not gonna blow this housing market down. And I can get into the fundamentals of why for uh, four hours, but in interest time we won't, won't do that. Instead, we'll talk about the luxury market. And the luxury market in Orange County at 1.25 plus is at 271 day expected market time. This was as of last Thursday. So, it was at five, at five weeks ago, it was at 121. So you can see how much that has moved. And it's worse than last year at this time. And last year at this time, it was slow. LA County is 1.5 and above, and they're at a 346 day expected market time. They were at 155 five weeks ago. San Diego is at 1.25 plus. They're at 245 days. They're at 118 five weeks ago. Riverside is 650,000 plus. And those poor people out in the, uh, in the low desert, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, that area, they are what is killing the Riverside County market and stats wise when you average it out. So you have to really boil down to your local market in the housing report to see what's going on. Because the expected market time is at 378 days, over a year for everything above 650,000. And that's, it was at 166 four weeks ago. San Bernardino, 650,000 plus. They too, they're at 229 days. They're at 125 four weeks ago. So buyers that are waiting to, to time this market, I want them to send me their algorithms and what they're using to figure this out because I, I do this for a living. I've never been able to tell anybody exactly when to, uh, to uh, in the market, if it was me and I was a buyer, because I know what's going on in the housing market, I would lock and load and look for a good rate. If rates are good and it was June 1st, right around there, that's when I would do it if I was a buyer. And um, so you were going to get a lot of fence sitters and a lot of noise going on from these fence sitters and buyers talking about what it should be and what it is and should we write offers pricing in where values will be. Seriously. Who are they talking to? They, they're like making this stuff up. They're talking to their neighbors from a distance and they're talking about how everything's gonna implode and how they need to uh, wait until it goes down and they're gonna purchase then. Just a bunch of nonsense. So where do we go from here? I talked about it before, coronavirus will limit new supply and will damper demand. We're gonna be in balanced market. That's where we are today. There's, uh, we're, we have this tug of war. The tug of war is between buyers and their own ridiculous thinking. You see this tug of war between buyers' irrational thinking and market realities. They want it to be a buyer's market, yet the market realities won't help them in, in that. And it, for the year, that's for the whole year, when we look at this in December, we're going to be at about 3% appreciation for all of SoCal. Understand that that, if people are going, how can we appreciate from here? No, it's year over year. Because when you look at January 1st to January 1st, we already appreciated about 5% in those first few months of the year, in the first two and a half months. It was screaming up and then it it's, it's, will be flat and then maybe come down a couple percent. And that's why I'm saying 3%. So if you're looking at, uh, but remember, we came up quite a bit during those first few months because the market was just absolutely scorching hot. It was actually too hot for my liking and I saw way too much appreciation and I just didn't. So, uh, but understand the other side of this, interest rates are going to rule the day and they're going to fix a lot of, of the negative things that are going on in the economy. And uh, so low mortgage rate environment is going to instigate demand and help recover quickly. And luxury, luxury is going to be sluggish for the year. And until we start to see the stock market and everything totally rebound and come back, and when we see the 10-year treasury rise above 1%, that's when there's a lot more faith that we're getting out of this. It's not until then that we're going to see luxury uh, uh, start to uh, thaw out. So it may thaw out by the end of the year, but I'm really thinking not until 2020.